Hey you folks, so forgive me in advance, I, I know I tend to ramble quite a bit and oh just one more thing in my videos and I think this video is going to be especially bad because um, I just, I usually go into my videos with a vague outline of what I want to say and all the talking points I want to hit and I've got nothing right now. Um, but I just, I want to get this out, get it done, get it off my lap because I've been banging my head against the wall with it for months now. I've been working on this project since June 22nd, give or take, and uh, in case you're not watching this when I upload the video, it is, as of today, October 11th. So what I did is um, I tested some Game Boy Advance SP batteries. A lot of Game Boy Advance SP batteries. Uh, oof. So this was a very long project. Let me start at the beginning here. So this is the battery mod that I had been... Oh, hello. Let's turn autofocus back on. Uh, this is the battery mod that I had made that video on. If you click on my channel on YouTube, it's the one video that pops up on top of everything else because I have it pinned to my channel or whatever the hell that is. Um, but this is that 603048 cell and then that PCB that I had made, uh, that I had designed. And I shared this, the, um, the design files for this thing on my GitHub. I made it free for uh, everyone to just download the files and make your own. I have never once sold anything Game Boy related. I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say I don't sell stuff on eBay every now and then. Um, well, I don't anymore, but y you know what I mean. I, I don't, I don't have a store. I'm not selling these. I'm not making any money off of these. So whether you have one of these in your Game Boy, it, it does absolutely nothing for me except give me the warm fuzzies. Um, but these are the batteries that Retro Game Repair Shop has stocked. Uh, they're using specifically these HHS cells, uh, and they had sent me 10 of them to play with the test and, you know, just, just see how they live up. See, uh, you know, if they're a good, a good cell for the most part. And of almost all the batteries I tested, they are fantastic. Um, they're quoted 850 milliamp hours on the casing and most of them measured or over a thousand and that was just that that just blew my mind these were fantastic um but these weren't the only batteries that i tested of course originally i was just going to test these but then you know i i put off finishing the video a few weeks because um fantastic maker by the name of helder came out with these pretty soon after. Uh, these are the Megabat 800 milliamp hour batteries for a GBA SP. Largely the same thing that I had done except in a um, complete package. You just drop it in your Game Boy. Uh, he has these custom kinda not PCBs made and then he just has the cell wrapped up with uh, his own custom label. And to be honest, they're fantastic. These are wonderful batteries. I love them. My single only problem with these is that they're only avail available in North America. So all the people who I know in Europe or Australia can't really get them without going through extraordinary measures and that's just unfortunate. But these things are great. They even tested higher than they're labeled. This one in particular tested at 888 milliamp hours. Uh, but I did order a couple of them actually. And then I was getting ready to publish my video after testing these two batteries. And then these things came out. So these are the high capacity battery packs uh, for Game Boy Advance SP and these are in the same style as those generic aftermarket ones that you can pick up on AliExpress or eBay or you, you name it. I think every shop that carries SP batteries also carries these. Um, these aren't great. These are significantly better, but they're not quite as good as they might seem. They say 850 milliamp hour on the label. I tested a lot of them closer to, I don't know because I forgot to write it on this cell, but I have my notes in front of me and this particular cell, number 17, tested at 741 milliamp hours. So 110 less than quotes on the label. All right, still not fantastic. 
I mean, pretty good, but could be better. And then, as soon as I was done testing these, these things came out. And uh, these are the ones from Retro 6. Now, I had a lot to say about this battery, more so than I had to say about any of these other batteries, and I ended up making a separate video on it. Um, I'd recommend you want to watch. I'd recommend you watch it if you're considering any of these batteries, uh, because even though they say 850 milliamp hours on the label, like most of the other batteries in here, these did actually test over 850 milliamp hours. They tested it, this one in particular tested at 871. I did have two of these things. I forget what the other one tested at, uh, but unfortunately that battery is long gone for another reason that I will get into momentarily. And as I'm filming this video right now, there is at least one more battery that I know of coming out very soon, but I think I'm safe to go ahead and publish that anyway because it's going to be using the exact same cells that I have already tested, and that's this thing here, but I, I'm i not supposed to talk about it. So I'm just going to point, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, hey look guys, something's coming out. But um, I can't give you more details until it's actually out. Um, anyway. Let's get on to the actual data portion, uh, all the all the data that I gathered. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So my methodology here was to test with two different Game Boy Advance SP consoles. Um, I did that for two different reasons. One, because my Game Boy Advance SP does not necessarily represent everyone's Game Boy Advance SP. Every console is a little bit different in terms of power consumption, so I figured I'd test two. But not only that, I figured I would test two of the different brand backlight kits. So this Venusaur one has the Funny Playing IPS kit in it, and the Surf Blue console has the One Chip IPS kit in it. Now, I would have upgraded this console to that new, um, the the two in one kit with the with the um, color palettes and whatnot. I, I was genuinely going to upgrade this console to that just because I like that kit better. It doesn't have the frame dropping, so on and so forth. But I wanted to finish this testing up with this kit before I changed out any of the variables. Um, my testing methodology was exactly as you're seeing right here. I just booted up both the consoles at the same time with the same game. Um, more or less. One of them has Ruby, the other has Sapphire, but they should be identical in terms of power consumption. And then I literally just ran them down with a uh, with a stopwatch. Um, now, this one, the one chip kit, does use more power than the funny playing kit, which is why I wanted to test both, because I wanted to give people a good idea of what to expect. If you have, you know, a one chip kit, here are the numbers you might get. If you have a funny playing kit, here are the numbers you might get. Of course, everything is going to change depending on what brightness you have. Um, this kit does remember the brightness, so I was very careful to never touch this button. And since I don't know specifically what brightness level it's on, and I might have more testing to do, I'm still going to not touch that button. Uh, this kit, I don't care. I can adjust it all day long because it will just reset when I power it off. But one more thing I do want to mention uh, while we're on the subject. See, I told you I'd do that. Um, I did have to do redo a lot of the tests with this console in particular. This is the Funny Playing console, and I found out after I had completed all of my tests, when I collated all of my data and looked at it, some of the numbers just looked really fucking off. Like... Um, that doesn't make sense, something must be wrong off. When you're doing multiple tests in a row and you measure the capacity of a battery and then you do the runtime on it and the runtime is less than half of a battery that has less than half the capacity, you know something's wrong. Anyway, I found out that this console no longer consistently fully recharges batteries. And like all the best problems, it is an intermittent problem, so I ended up do it, redoing a lot of the tests by just pulling batteries out of this console, charging them in an external charger, and then popping them back in here. And so that's why you'll see in my data that I'm about to present that there are multiple entries for the same kit on the same console. 
So let me go ahead and start off with the capacities. Like I said, I had 10 of these cells from Retro Game Repair Shop. These are the HHS cells. Um, on average, the capacity of these things tested at 1,007 milliamp hours. Um, the lowest I measured was 951 and the highest I measured was 1,084. And these things are just fantastic bang for the buck. These are way better than the other cells that I recommended in the actual video that I did on these things. I don't know if I have any handy right now. Uh, oh, here's one. The CL brand cells. These things suck compared to the HHS ones. The, the HHS cells are the exact same size. Uh, on the label, they even have less quoted capacity, but when you actually test them, they test higher. These ones tested, I believe, about 850. I, I, I think you're gonna find that's a common number for, for SP batteries. That seems to be about where the bang for the buck is for uh, capacity and ease of manufacturing. But anyway, that's the, oh, excuse me, that's the capacity I tested for those. For the Helder batteries, I only ordered two, uh, so keep in mind my sample size is much lower with the rest of these batteries. Um, the lowest capacity I measured was 875, the highest I measured was 902. Uh, so on average, these things are about 888 milliamp hour capacity. Fantastic for, uh, for the price, they're only like 10 bucks shipped. Or wait, no, that doesn't include shipping, don't, don't quote me on that, but they are still only like 10 bucks, or they, I don't know. I'll, I'll, th I'll throw a link down in the description to all the batteries. Um, except for the one that I genuinely think is a fire hazard. Um, next battery is the these things, the high capacity battery packs. Now, I don't know what vendors stock these ones in particular other than Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, RGRS has sent me a ton of batteries for testing. I have four of these, I think, four or five. I see four on my desk, which means I probably have five. Um, so my sample size is a little bit higher with these. My lowest measured capacity was 732 milliamp hours. My highest measured capacity was 764 milliamp hours, uh, which puts my average at about 747 milliamp hours. And that's across all the tests I ran on all of these batteries. So some of them did test a little bit higher. Uh, I wrote the specific averages on each of them. And you know, you can see this one's 14 milliamp hours higher than that one. Not that it really makes that big of a difference in actual gameplay, but you know, just just saying they're, they're pretty consistent, but they're not all identical. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, we have Retro 6's perfect replacement battery pack. Now, I'll give them this. The capacity is by far the closest out of any of the batteries I've tested. Um, or the stated capacity. Now, until I got to the quote-unquote high capacity battery, all the other cells did test higher than their rated capacity, which is fantastic. That that doesn't always happen, especially when you're ordering cells from uh, AliExpress or wherever. Um, and this one also tested higher. It just it was much closer to the stated capacity. Now, like I said, I did order two of these. Um, I ordered these out of pocket, and I ordered the Helder batteries out of pocket. These... Mm, they're not great. They're they're not worth the money. I don't think you should waste your time or your energy with these things. Um, but anyway, sorry, getting distracted. The highest capacity I measured was 880 milliamp hours. The lowest was 849. So, okay, yes, that is technically lower than the stated capacity, but we'll call that margin of error. This is why I always run several tests and then just throw out any data that looks off. Um, but my average capacity was 863 between both the batteries I ordered. This one obviously tested above that one. The other one, rather. Alright, but capacity doesn't tell the whole story, especially because 
Game Boy Advance SPs were designed for several different style batteries. If you flip one of these over and get into the battery compartment here, which let's do that right now, shall we? There we go. Oh, there's the other one. Anyway, you get into the battery compartment, you might have noticed this, 3.7 to 3.8 volts. That's because the Game Boy Advance was originally designed for two different chemistries of battery. Not just one, but two. Ah, ah, ah. So, ugh. I'm gonna reach over and grab my bag of tricks here. So this is an original Game Boy Advance SP battery, just one of them. Here's another one. These are the two different types of batteries that it was designed for. You notice this one is 3.7 nominal voltage. If you don't know what that means, I highly recommend you Google it. 3.7 volts lithium ion battery. All right, this is an original battery. This is what the Game Boy Advance SP was designed for, and this is something that I pulled out of the Game Boy Advance SP. This one, the other one, 3.8 volts nominal voltage, lithium ion manganese. All right, so this is a different type of battery. Now, I was never worried about sticking stuff like this in there, these lithium ion cells, because this is the exact same chemistry as this battery, excuse me. Um, the charge profile is the same, the discharge profile is the same, the upper and lower volt cutoffs are the same, everything. So you just drop it in, it'll be fine. But this battery is a little bit different. So the SP was designed with a slightly higher than, I guess, typical low voltage cutoff. That means uh, if you were to, before I get into that, let me, let me explain this a little bit, uh, give you a little bit more background. So for those that aren't aware, I did just tell you to Google nominal battery voltage, this 3.8 volts, and I still recommend you do that because more information is always more better, but batteries work by, um, I, I don't even know how to explain it. So a fully charged battery, lithium ion, for example, is going to measure, is going to put out 4.2 volts. Notice that's higher than 3.8. A fully depleted lithium ion battery is anywhere from 3.2 to 2.8 volts depending on how, um, how what, what kind of quality you have and how much capacity you need out of your battery. But because the Game Boy Advance SP was also designed to use these lithium ion manganese batteries, which are mostly the same but discharge uh, the, the low voltage isn't quite as low. That means the low voltage cutoff in these things is at 3.4 volts. So any charge you have on the battery that's less than 3.4 volts, the SP cannot use. That means even though I tested these batteries at, for example, shit, well, fine, I'll use this one as an example. Even though I no, that's a bad example, because that's, that's an SP battery. Come on, Mako, get with the program. I'll use Helder's battery as an example. This thing's marked 800 milliamp hour capacity. Now, I don't know if that's um, the full battery capacity, and then he's just being generous because of averages, and, you know, you always want to underrate your batteries so that, you know, any extra capacity is a bonus, but just in case you get a battery that actually hits that because it's lower than normal, you know, you're not technically lying about it. Or if these batteries are tested to only 3.4 volts, low volt cutoff. When I did all of my testing with all of these batteries, I did them outside of an SP, uh, capacity testing at least, and I tested them down to 2.85 volts because that's what my battery charger does. I have a new battery charger that has a programmable low voltage cutoff, so going forward I will only be testing SP batteries to 3.4 volts, but I'm just throwing that out there because I want I want you to keep that keep that in your mind as you're looking at these run times going, well gee, that doesn't add up with the the um the power usage you showed in whatever video. And yes, 
you're right, that doesn't add up because, like I said, the SP isn't using that full capacity and there's unfortunately just really nothing we can do with it, do about it. Now, on the other hand, there really is not that much capacity in a battery between 3.4 and 3.2 volts. So, yes, we are leaving some capacity on the table, probably an hour max, half an hour with this one, <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Here's my, uh, here's my results. So we're going to look at the Funny Playing IPS results first. Um, and I'm going to do this in order I have my notes, not the order that I actually did the testing. I have no idea why my notes are in this order, but here we are. So first up, I have the Helder battery tested, and this is why I threw out my results. Because my phone isn't focusing. There we go. So you see on my first run, it lasted 4 hours and 11 minutes on the Funny Playing kit. And yet on the one chip kit, it lasted five hours, 33 minutes. That doesn't make sense. I know the one chip console uses more power than the funny playing console. So how it lasted longer on that, that didn't make any sense to me. So that's when I did research and that's when I figured out that my console wasn't working properly. And that was the last battery I tested. So anyway, I retested it. Ch ch testing it, charging it outside the console, and then running it back inside the console. And I only did two tests, and one of my tests looks kind of funky, so I'm tempted to just ignore that result, because, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, that's margin of error. An hour, that's way off. Uh, so this number in parentheses is the time until the low battery light came on. So we're just going to look at test one for now. We got 6 hours and 20 minutes on the green light, and then 8 hours and 21 minutes total. And I tested these bad boys, that's what this RGRS line item is in my notes. That is 4 hours and 2 minutes. See, that doesn't seem right. I think I need to retest this. Oh, but wait, no, I'm sorry, I was only looking at the first number. So, 4 hours and 2 minutes until the low battery light came on, but then nine hours and 49 minutes until the console shut off entirely. That actually seems right. Uh, that, that adds up with what I had calculated. Um, but the weird thing here is we have more low power than we do high power. Yeah, uh, whereas it should be the other way around. That's just, that's just one of the weird things about battery chemistries. I don't know specifically what Helder uses in these cells. Uh, it just says rechargeable LiPo on here, 3.7 volts nominal. I'm assuming these are the same chemistry because I have very little data on both, on either. But that's, that's just an artifact of the SP being designed for several different styles of battery. And unfortunately, there's... No real workaround for that either. Um, well, that's not 100% true. A while back I did a battery mod with this battery gauge here. You can see increments in, uh, you can see down to 10% resolution basically. So there's 10 steps, and as the battery gets lower and lower and lower, you lose, a, you lose an LED for each 10% or so. So I can see my battery is approximately 90% charged, somewhere in there. That's a workaround for that if you don't like that. Um, all right, so next I tested the Retro 6 batteries I ordered. Uh, you notice there are two line items here, but there's only one test under one of the batteries. That's because after I did the first discharge test, the battery would not charge again. I couldn't get it to charge. I couldn't get it to charge in an SP. I tried both SPs. I tried another SP. I tried um, this SP because I know the charge port in this thing works perfectly fine. Wouldn't charge. Eventually, I popped the battery apart, took it apart, hooked my battery charger up to the bare terminals on the cell, bypassing the protection board, and I got it to charge fine. It still seems to work fine. But the protection board still is uh, in shutdown mode. I don't know why. So I bought two batteries and I only got one charge out of them, out of one of them. 
So I only tested that battery literally once. The capacity test went just fine, but as soon as I discharged it in an SP, nope, it was done. Anyway, I tested the other Retro 6 battery, and it looks like on average I got about four and a half hours until low power came on, and about mm, eight hours 15 total out of the battery. So it's pretty on par with what Helder is offering. Um, and given the fact that this actually fits in the console properly and can actually be removed from the console without gouging up the sides, I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, and then last, I tested the Retro, not Retro 6, Retro Game Repair Shop high capacity cells here. Um, I got, see, interesting number here. I got more high than low, but it went for about four hours, 20 minutes or so, four hours, 10 minutes. And the total time was six hours, 45 minutes, give or take. So it was noticeably lower than the, the rest of them. So in terms of runtime, you've got this, 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 and then this. So this has the most runtime, the, uh, the mod battery that I did a video on, specifically with the cells, that retro game repair shop cells, these HHS ones. Then right in the middle, we have Helder's battery with Retro 6's battery. They're about the same capacity, but one of these is clearly superior to the other. And then we have the Retro Game Repair Shop high capacity, which was actually the lowest capacity of the bunch. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the one chip kit and see if my results are any different. Um, spoiler alert, they weren't. Uh, but either way, this is still good to see what kind of numbers you can expect out of this thing. Of course, lower brightness will be better battery life yet again, and higher brightness will be even worse. Uh, and this was tested, again, with a regular game, not a flash cart. A flash cart will be even worse if you're testing with, like, a, or if you're playing with an easy flash Omega, you're going to get absolute terrible battery life, no matter what you do. And that's just the way it is. Um, so Helder's battery, we got about three hours, 20 minutes until the low power light came on and about five and a half hours total. The uh, Retro Game Repair Shop HHS batteries, those lasted shockingly about two and a half hours before the low battery light came on, but with the longest play time of a total of about six and a half hours average. See, that's, that's another one of those weird results that I should double check because that is quite variable. Um, I tested my one remaining Retro 6 battery. I only tested it twice. Um, we got almost three hours before the low battery light came on, but about five and a half hours total. And then the high capacity battery from Retro Game Repair Shop about two hours before the low battery light came on, and then about 410, 415 total. So again, exact same order. Uh, we have Retro Game Repair Shop, these HHS, my mod battery uh, with my board here. That's the most runtime, followed by Retro 6 and Helder, right about the same. Uh, in this case, Helder did actually give noticeably more capacity all of 10 minutes, but a win's a win, I guess. Um, and then last but not least, the high capacity battery. Um, and while I was at it, I did do one more test because I was very curious about this. Uh, as we all know, the Game Boy Advance SP does support play and charge. So, you know, you could be sitting there playing blah, 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 blah. Oh no, my red battery light comes on. You just plug it in and keep playing. You know, you'll save later, shut it down later, let it fully fin finish charging later. SP does support that. I wanted to test if it still supported that with a flash cart and an IPS kit on max brightness. And while it is kind of sketchy, it does work. Um, it does draw enough current, but it takes bloody ages to charge at nine hours. Um, 
which is well beyond what the manual says, I think. Actually, I don't know on that. I just know that uh, the SP does use some of the power reserved for battery charging to just run the console. So the more power hungry your console is, you know, with a flash car and an IPS mod, that means the battery charge is slower. It does still charge though. I didn't have any problems, but with how, with how little uh, room there is at this point with both an IPS kit and a flash cart, I really can't recommend it. If your battery's on and low, save it, shut down, then charge. So, anyway, let's sum this stuff up because I gotta get out of here. I gotta, I gotta take care of some business. Um, here's what we got. I did my tests. Take that with a grain of salt, absolutely. Um, I like to think I'm not biased, but I know everyone has a bias. Of course, I want my battery to win, but I have the data proving that it does win, I guess, if, if runtime is your only measure. If you want something that you could just drop into your console, of course, one of these two batteries is going to be the better choice. Um, but... You know, I, I, th there's trade-offs for all these batteries here. <sighs> Shoot, I forgot where I was going with that, man. I'm sorry. I, I told you this one, this was going to be a doozy of a video. Um, but yeah, my battery did give the highest runtime, even if it was slightly misleading with that low battery light coming on the soonest. That just means the discharge profile of these batteries is kind of weird. No cause for concern, I think, just something to keep in mind that your low battery light comes on with more than half your battery still remaining. Um, Helder's battery. I freaking love it, man. I, like I said, my only complaint is that international, getting these outside the U.S. is probably pretty difficult. I, I don't actually know because I'm in the U.S., so I was able to buy them like normal. But I know he only ships batteries to North America. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose if I had to think of another complaint, it would be that these only just came out and we haven't been able to play with these very long. Um, but otherwise, they're, they're really good. I absolutely wholeheartedly rec recommend them. These ones, Retro 6 batteries. Stay the fuck away. Please. All right. I will admit, I should have done more due diligence and tested this in other consoles. Because in my video that I uploaded, I was very... I was freaking livid when I put it in this console and couldn't get it out. And yes, I know, some of you poop socks are going to say, Oh, you could have just shoved a flathead in there and jammed it out. Well, yes, I could have. But... I didn't want to gouge the shit out of my console, so of course I didn't do that. Um, I'm sure it fits better in some consoles, but in my opinion, if it doesn't fit in an OEM console, then what the fuck is the point? You can't sell it claiming that it works in all SPs if it doesn't work in original SPs. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. What the fuck? Uh... If he ever gets that problem fixed, which is genuinely an easy fix, the problem was is with this frame. You could, if you wanted to, just take flush cutters and cut off part of this frame, and then it fits perfectly fine with zero issues. If he fixes that and then sells them, I will change my recommendation. Until then, stay the fuck away from this garbage. These things. All right. I haven't had any issues with them. But my single complaint is that the capacity is much higher than quoted. Um, please be careful of Bruns. Uh, they're okay for the price. I think they're pretty decent. Um, I do like them because they, they fit quite nicely. Nice and snug, but not too tight that you can't get the Jesus thing out. Um, Price-wise, I have absolutely no idea what these are going for, but I know they're probably the cheapest of the bunch. 
I can't say I know that they're probably. That doesn't make sense. I'm fairly certain that they are. As a matter of fact, I went ahead and paused the video and double checked and looked it up because I was just so unsure. Yes, these are the cheapest of the bunch. Retro Game Repair Shop sells them for seven bucks a pop. I haven't actually opened the listing yet, but I know he also put something in the description that says these are not 850 milliamp hours. That's just, unfortunately, what the manufacturer puts on there, and there's only so much you can do about it without ordering a whole factory's worth. Um, so, yeah, do I recommend them for the money? Absolutely. Do I recommend them if you want the most runtime? No, not at all. Get one of these. Um, do you want a good balance of the two? There you go. That's your battery. Uh, okay. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. And I honestly expected this video to take me five minutes. So that clearly didn't happen. Uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. I will, uh, I do try and read every comment even if I don't respond to every comment. I will also go ahead and throw a bunch of links in the description to all of these batteries except Mr. Firehazard over here. And um, I will also throw a link to my uh, results, the data that I measured, um, if you want to take a look at that for yourself, if you don't, you know, in the off chance you don't want to just go back in the video, pause it, and screenshot it, because that's just ridiculous. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I'll go ahead and throw a link to my, uh, my measurements, so you can go ahead and take a look for yourself. Um, and I just want to touch upon one of the points I was trying to make in the beginning, again, because I think it's worth keeping in mind that everyone has a bias. It's always worth considering what someone's bias is. Um, and I would like to point out to Retro6, in case he actually does watch these videos, that I'm not actually your competitor, so I don't have anything to get out of telling people that your batteries are shit, um, because they are. I'm not selling this stuff. I don't have anything to gain. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just so frustrated by some of the poop sack comments on Instagram. Um, yeah, good batteries, man. Good stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to end here before I start ranting again. Just kidding, one more thing. Uh, I am going to go ahead and edit this video together with all of the time lapses that I did. So from here on out, it's just my time lapse footage, uh, and it's going to be even further sped up. I think I did um, one frame every 10 seconds, and it's a 30 FPS video, and I'm going to speed it up even more than that. So it's going to be super quick. But in case you want to audit me, there's my data. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.